Hallelujah. He loves us so much. He didn't have to do anything, but he did. Hallelujah. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The best gift possible. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you that you're great. And we trust in your might. We trust in your grace. Yeah. 
didn't make it, but we're one of the ones who did, and we thank him for the breath that's in our lungs, and we shout your praise, hallelujah, we sing glory to our matchless God, thank you, Lord, for your goodness, hallelujah, he gives life.
Father, give him worthy praise. He's an incredible God. He deserves incredible praise. Our God is good. He's good all the time. Hallelujah. And as the angels proclaim, hallelujah, who he is, we proclaim along with them. We sing our song unto him. We give him thanksgiving out of our hearts. We give him the credit. We give him the glory. We give him the honor, all the worship. Hallelujah. He is Alpha. He is Omega. You are everything to us. And we give you all of our all of our praise tonight. Hallelujah. We bless you, God. We know, hallelujah, you are our God. We know that you know us by name. We know, hallelujah, that you are good for us. We know, hallelujah, that our trust can be in you because you're the only one who can. We bless you, God. Hallelujah. For all that you do, for all that you are, you're a great God. None greater. None better. Bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless him today. Isn't he a great God? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's turn to our scripture reading, and it's from Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43. Let's all read together. Amen. Isaiah 43, but now thus says the Lord, who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flames scorch you, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in your place. Since you were precious in my sight, you have been honored and I have loved you. Therefore, I will give men for you and people for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your descendants from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not keep them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. And it is so in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's receive our pastor, amen. Amen, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. We thank the Lord, amen. amen. He is just good to us, and we thank him for good worship, and we thank him for you just being here tonight. And uh, we know a lot is happening, but we just believe God. He's good. Amen. Uh, and uh, I wanted to say thank you for Christmas and everything you did and, and uh, the card you sent and the gift you gave. And we, we certainly appreciated that. And, and we love you for that. And we love you anyway, but we love you for that, too. And we thank God for you. And uh, we just continue to pray, pray for Annie. I understand she wasn't feeling well and, and pray for Laurence and, and keep him in your prayers and, 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 and others that are not feeling quite where, uh, uh, well, but those that let me know, I, I, you know, I can, I can say something about, but if I don't know, I can't say, oh yeah. And then Gloria who wasn't feeling, and, and, and Rose had, uh, uh, first she has a new grandbaby, uh, 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 Tiffany had a baby boy. Yeah, and so uh, then uh, uh, then there was a little outbreak with COVID. Uh, uh, Dre has it, and so 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 they're going through the quarantine period there. But she's but she's all right, and pray for her, and especially her sister Chrissy, uh, uh, who's in the hospital now. So uh, and she's very sick. So so let's believe God. Amen. 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 Uh, uh, how many of you are just glad to be in the house of God amen. today? Yeah. Uh, amen, yeah. amen. We're just glad to be here, and we're glad for so many things, glad for his keeping power and how he just sustains us. Amen? amen. And so uh, we're not going to prolong. We're going to go into the message. Right after the message, we're going to 
We're going to pray, and then we're going to take up offering, and I want to ask you to do something special uh, uh, at that time, but then uh, we're going to have uh, special music at this time. I'm 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow, I didn't want him to finish that. I come in like a fire, come in like a flood. I don't care what it looks like, because I'm so in love. Amen. 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 Put your hands together, give the Lord a good praise. Amen. 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 Well, we thank you for being with us this evening. We thank you for those that are looking in on us from Facebook or YouTube. And we, we welcome you and we thank God for you. And we thank God for your gifts. And we also want to say along the giving line, if you want to give and date it for today, it's acceptable for purposes next year for your life. So if this is where you want to deposit seed, uh, at the end of the year, you can do so. Dove Church is good ground. It's good ministry. And we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we believe in moving into the things of God. And, and your gift will be well served in every place. And so for those of you that do that consistently, we bless you and thank God for you. And just declare his riches over your life. Amen. 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 And we're going to move fastly into the word of God. And uh, after we say our confession, everybody with your Bibles in your hand, repeating after me, this is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. And that's who I am. Tonight I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging word of God. So my mind is alert. My heart is receptive as I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the wonderful name of Jesus, we thank you for this night, this last night of 2021 and we thank you for you being here with us and we praise you, Holy Spirit, for just moving through us, operating with us, helping us to speak as an oracle of God. So we come against everything that's on assignment to stop the word from going forth and declare your word will live big in hearts and minds and transform lives. And we claim it all in Jesus' name. And we declare that the word of our mouth and the word of our testimony will be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Tonight, we want to talk from the subject forward. Everybody say forward. 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 Well, I wanted to start this New Year's Eve message with a declaration from Psalm 118.17. 118.17. 17. And if you have your Bibles, I want you to find it. And since you have them, find it, and we're going to read it together. Psalm 118. Seventeen. This is a word that I've been declaring over this house, and it has held. Amen? amen. When you have it, say amen. amen. All right. Ready? Let's begin. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Is that what yours says? Amen. I didn't hear enough of you say it. Let's say it again. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Since you're going to live, you might as well work for the Lord. Amen. Since you're going to live. How, how many of you are going to live? Amen. Amen. You might as well do the works of the Lord if you're going to live. Amen? Amen? If you are a believer, you ought to be doing the works of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And so 
As I declared that, I believe that even during this COVID reality for the last year and a half going on, two years, that we wouldn't lose a life, and thus far we have not. Amen. Say amen. amen. And we're believing God and his keeping power. Now, some of you have gotten infected. But you're sitting here tonight. Amen. And you're all right. Amen. 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 So we thank God because his word holds. Amen. Amen. And, and, and to you out there, the word will hold you too. Yes. Yes. Just stand on it. Amen. Amen. And that's what we believe for. So that was the opening the place that, that I wanted to, to start at. To, to let you know, first of all, that we are made in his image. And since we are made in God's image, we are a creative force. You are a creative force. And this is how you need to operate like you are a creative force. You are not with creative ability. You are a creative force. And this force is released through faith-filled words. You can have what you say. You need to say something. Don't let anger be the only thing that make you say something. Because you say something and then something else. Say something. Believing you receive what you said when you said it. Not necessarily when it appears. You don't have to believe for something you already have. So believe for it before you see it. Before it shows up, before you have a manifestation of it, you start calling it forth. It's in our DNA. It's in our creative life. The Lord dropped this statement in my heart. Life is an opportunity to continue. While you want to stop here and stop there and say, this is why I can't go forward. This stopped me. This person hindered me. This the Life is an opportunity to continue. And I dare say in parenthesis, without excuse. The purpose-filled plan of God is purposed in your life. No matter what the circumstance or the problem You can continue to be a person of purpose. The quest is to find out that purpose and lose yourself in it. We get lost in our tribulation and trouble, but we don't get lost in our purpose. And the word says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek to run in your purpose, and when, when it's time to get addition, it'll run over you, but you're already operating in purpose. You can't quit doing something until purpose shows up. And we want to wait till we get there. When it's a journey, it's a continuation, it's a process, it's a path. I left home coming to church tonight. And when I left home, my goal was to get here. And in order for me to get here, I had to take the route to expressway to streets to get here. 
I didn't stay on Northwestern Highway and say, my purpose is the church. Do you understand? We should immediately decide that the purpose is not centered on me. Nevertheless, Lord, your will be done. It's his purpose for your life. And it's not centered on you. The optimal thing you can be is a vessel for use. These last two years have caused us to shift paradigms or thinking. You've redone how you do just about everything. How many times have I decided to go in somewhere and I had to run back to the car to get that dreaded mass? Somebody ought to help me there. How many of you had, had to do the, 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 the mass jog? You, know? you thought you had it. And, and the, the, the other day I was cleaning out coat pockets. And there's some form of a mass in every coat pocket. In the car. One I found on the floor under the seat in the car. Just everywhere because I'm so afraid of being without it and, 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 and I, I want people to feel secure because I'm not seeming like I'm, 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 I'm not responsible. I want to wear it. I'm a preach without it so I'm still responsible y'all. But, but the point is is that, that we are so mass conscious that mass has changed our, our paradigm and sometimes when we see other people without them we, we have to Train ourselves not to stare at them. Because a few times I want to ask them, are you having a problem? But I don't say anything. But don't get close to me. Them the ones that want to get out. One of my babies laughed back then. And, 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 and so our paradigm and our thinking has shifted. In how we operate, where we go, how we go, even how much we wash our hands, how much we do things, how much we clean stuff, how much we sanitize stuff, how much we try to wipe down stuff to keep down any kind of disease or, 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 or any spreading entity. We've shifted. But it also has shifted our, our psyche. It's changed our thinking about so many things and how we operate with it. And, 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 but at the same time, it has caused us to pivot. And the pivoting may be more godly than you think. The pivoting means, when I looked up pivot, it means to spin and go in a different direction. Now we can look at the dread of the situation or we can look at the pivoting of the situation. What does it make us do? It makes us rethink what we took for granted. Now we have to do it differently. We've pivoted. And some of y'all are slow students to pivoting, but you're going to pivot whether you want to or not. How many don't like for stuff to change? You like for it to stay the same. You don't want it to keep moving. Stay where I put you. Amen. Amen. You want to be able to grab somebody and just hug them and say, I love you. And you have to stop cold. And you know, everybody bumping, you know. But in all of this, there's a word for this time, and that's forward. We're going forward. Well, forward means to move progressively 
onward while refusing to go backward. Moving progressively onward while refusing to go backward. Now on Sunday, you're going to think that pastor is mixed up. Because I'm going to talk about going back to the old pathways. <laughs> I'm not confused. But you're going forward and you're going back. So you can go forward. Amen. The message that I'm preaching tonight is the second message that I prepared for tonight. Because when I started the first one, the one I just mentioned, God said, preach that Sunday. Find something else to talk about. I'll tell you. And he did. And I heard the word forward. Because from this point, that's where you headed for. Well, you've already declared you're going to live and not die, so you might well go forward. Amen. With life being for, there's yet something to be done through kingdom exploits. Proverbs 8 and 12. Might as well just move you forward. Proverbs 8 and 12. King James Version. Are you looking for it? And it says there, I wisdom dwell with prudence. Everybody say prudence. And find out knowledge of witty inventions. Everybody say witty inventions. What is prudence? It is wisdom practiced. When you operate in wisdom, you are considered prudent. They are wise. They do the wise thing. Some people say, that's smart. But I think wisdom is better than being smart. Because its source is from a different place. Wisdom. Wisdom. Prudence is wisdom practice. And through this practice is birth witty inventions. And the reason why I'm talking to you because you should have already picked up on the theme that, that I'm talking about you being made in the image of God. Already established you're not getting ready to die. Look around the room and tell somebody you're not getting ready to die. So you might as well live the purpose. So, so, so since you're going to live, some of you need to develop into the witty inventions area of Scripture. It's all through Scripture. Because I've got some creators among us. You're making stuff. You're doing stuff. But I'm here to encourage you, to exhort you. To, 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 to be the catalyst to you springing into that thing in 2022. Everybody say witty inventions. Amen. But as we look at it, we always have to look into scripture to see do we find an example of what we're teaching about and what we were shown in another scripture. Well, we saw it mentioned here in Proverbs 8 and 12, the word witty invention. Well, we need to see an example of it. And this is one of many examples of witty inventions in scripture. And they come from the book of Exodus. And the truth is, the fact that the persons that I'm I'm going to read to you about are in the Lord. They honor God. God causes them to, to flow creatively. And their creative flow is for his purpose. It's for his purpose. And 
Exodus 31, 1 through 5. And we're going to stay in Exodus for the next three readings. Exodus 31, 1 through 5. This, this area intrigued me. When you have it, the first one say amen. 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 Does it start with then the Lord? Amen. amen. It said, then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, who spoke to the Lord? Moses. See, sometimes your leader will speak to you about you. You're the leader, but... You're not the one that's going to do it. So God speaks to you about who's among you. Amen. And he said, see, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. What God showed Moses was that there was one among you that I'm going to do something with. You're going to lead him, but he's going to do and he's going to perform my purpose. And it says there, And I have filled him with the spirit of God. When you are filled with purpose, is it possible that what comes with that is the spirit of God to get his will done in the earth? In the spirit of God, how? In wisdom, But not only wisdom, but understanding. And in knowledge. So he's given him three things to do his will that he didn't necessarily have before he's filled him full of his spirit. Do you see that? That's why when you pray for wisdom, he'll give it to you. You pray for knowledge, he'll give it to you. And and, and then it goes on to say, And, everybody say and, And. in all manner of workmanship to design artistic works. When I read that, I said, wow. Now I got to chase this God. After God gives you one scripture, then you have to chase, I got to know what you're talking about. What are you saying? And and workmanship to design artistic work. To work in gold, in silver, in bronze, in cutting jewels for setting, in carving wood, and to work in all manner of workmanship. So he said, in this one guy, I'm pointing out, he gonna know how to make thread, he gonna know how to work in metal, so he's gonna be a metallurgist, he gonna be a carpenter, he gonna know how to work in wood, and he gonna be a, a diamond cutter. All of this thing, this man was not equipped with until the Lord pointed him out and said, I filled him with my spirit. Are y'all there? God filled him for what purpose? So that he could, so he could birth out of himself witty inventions. What would a witty invention how to do all that stuff that he didn't know before God chose him. I think that's awesome. Then, Moses again shares what God would do through Bezalel and how he was enabled. Exodus 35, 30 through 35. New King James. Now he's going to talk about Bezalel again. When you have it, say amen. And Moses said to the children of Israel, 
See, the Lord has called by name. He's revisiting that story as he's telling it again. The Lord has called by name Bezazel, the son of Uri, the son of Ur, of the tribe of Judah, and he has filled him with the Spirit of God. Again, what does it come with? In wisdom, everybody say wisdom, understanding, in knowledge, and all manner of workmanship to design artistic works to work in gold and silver and bronze and cutting jewels for setting. Do you know how many professional trades that is rolled in one? He gave him the understanding how to do it. Before then, it was just a gold rock. Before then, it was just a hunk of silver. But God knew that he wanted it to be fashioned into something. So he had to give him what he needed to help him do his job. So he gave him the idea of witty inventions to help him do the job. Now he didn't give him a tool. Y'all ain't listening. He did not give him a tool. Okay, let me talk about somebody else just right quick. David played one instrument. It was the harp. But before the Psalms were complete, he had written parts for every instrument and the music. Who taught him how to write music? The Spirit of God. <laughs> See, the people that's writing music now, they basically are copycatting and sampling. A lot of them. Because you can listen to a song, I can listen to a song, and I remember when I first heard it. I know whether it's James Brown or Michael Jackson. Based on the beat. And then they hold a hand and say, I wrote a song. No, you sampled a song. And then when I think about them, he sampled, Michael sampled too because there was somebody named Jackie before him. <laughs> oh boy. I was looking at, I don't know how I ended up with a video looking at, I was just flipping through things and I, I saw James Brown and I saw him doing the moonwalk. Singing, baby, baby, I got the feeling. <laughs> Some of you old enough to remember that. <laughs> Reading some more. Finishing this Exodus 35, 30 to 35. And he has put in his heart the ability, here's God's adding on. He said, I'm going to tell you what else I did. Not only did I call this one man, but I put in him the ability to teach. In him and Aholiab, the son of Ahishamach, of the tribe of Dan. He said, because I wanted my purpose fulfilled, I know he couldn't do it all by himself. He had to become a teacher. So my spirit is in him to teach them how to do what he had to teach himself to do. Come on here. Isn't God amazing? God's purpose will be exercised in the earth whether you want to do it or not. But since you decided and you told me you wanted to live... You might as well operate in witty inventions. Wow, wow, wow. He has filled them with skill to do all manner of work. That means God says, I put it into ability to grasp what they need to, 
to get the job done. Woo! Of work of the engraver and the designer and the tapestry maker in blue, purple, scarlet thread, fine linen, and the weaver, those who do every work and those who design artistic work. Why is all of that needed? See, see, when you approach a text, you got to say, why is all this needed? Why did God call him initially? Why did Moses point him out? It was all to build a tabernacle. These, these were the artisans that put all the great workmanship into the tent. But they had no knowledge of what God wanted. So his spirit had to put in them what he wanted so that they would come forth with witty inventions and tools to do what God called them to do. So you are without excuses saying, but I don't have. You might have them within you. Oh, God. What was in George Washington Carver? What was in Madam Walker? What was in them? How did she know that that straightening comb thing would work? There was no straightening comb. She made it. Took some metal and put it together and left serrations in between so that it would go between Cora's hair. And maybe she tried it on her hair and said, all oh, the results is better as I pull this comb through. And so what became a perpetual afro became some flowing locks. Look. Because somebody decided to heat up something. Are y'all out there? I'm going to run on. Y'all don't like this as much as I do. Here is the outcome. Exodus 38. 22 and 23. Exodus 38, 22 and 23. You have to see the line. And here is that line. And it starts again. Here is our name. Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, made all that the Lord had commanded Moses. Moses didn't make it. Who made it? Bezalel. And with him was a holy ab and a hishama of the tribe of Jan, and a graver, a designer, a weaver of blue, purple, scarlet thread, and a fine linen. So they had all the effects of the temple together. They made every piece of cloth. What did they make? The purple and the gold thread. God showed them how to make gold thread. And they made it. Pot Post sockets of silver, post caps with silver and gold, bronze altar, gold lampstand, ark of the covenant overlaid with gold. My God. Priestly garments. And on the priestly garment, one of them was an ephod, and there were 12 stones representing the 12 tribes of Israel made out of beryl, sardonyx, topaz, onyx, amethyst. And they weren't just rocks that they glued to the fabric. They cut them. Because the stones had to reflect the light. When the prophet and the priest came out among the people, the sun caught it. And the light said that God was with his people. God don't want you to just throw anything together. So he'll help you make it. So it will be what he wants and not what you want. He's got to have what he wants and not what you want. He, he's got to have what he wants and not what. See, when you want it a certain way, you call it a certain way. But is it what God wants? <laughs> and you may not get the result of it now, but it'll come in later. Amen. I didn't give God what he wanted. That, that, that was the issue between Cain and Abel. One brought a good gift and one brought a lousy one. 
the lousy gift was not something God asked for. Stop giving God lousy gifts. Give him what he asked for. Now that you have no plans to die and you live a purpose for your life, it's time to write that book. It's time to do those training manuals. It's time to start an investment club. It's time to start a, a, a mentorship program so that when you're off the face of the earth, somebody can still be around that learn how to do something from you. Stop being an empire unto yourself. Okay, you've counseled enough children. Write a manual, start a counseling and consulting firm so you can offer your skills to educational institution. It might just be an additional stream of income. Get paid for what you know. Get paid for what you know. Give little away free. And you'll do better than that man that talked about the art of a deal. Here are a few principles and pastors moving on. Happy New Year. <laughs> few principles of moving forward. Number one, preparation. In early days in school, one of my instructors said, preparedness promotes efficiency. If you're prepared, you will be efficient. But you want to do it without preparation, only in church. We want to do it without training. And we want to do it without being tested and tried. But you don't want a surgeon to work on you unless you know he passed his classes. But in church we want to get up because the Lord said do it. But the Lord also said by way of David that he didn't want no novice musicians. He wanted somebody that knew C from B flat. Or don't play. <laughs> Ooh, I know that's tight. Anointing only enhances what you prepare to do. Ooh. So preparation. In the Untouchables movie, Sean Connery's character, Officer Malone, asked Elliot Ness, what are you prepared to do? You must prepare before the battle. Winston Churchill. Prepare before the battle. You need to learn how to shoot a gun before you need to shoot it. You just want to show up and be efficient, and you're not. Nothing untested is worthwhile. Everything has to be tested. Woo! It's called preparation. Jesus had to even prepare to die. And you want to do it without preparation. Showing up is not preparation. I used to hate our choir directors. Because we rehearsed and we rehearsed. And he would go over parts until I was, I was just, just crazy. And I, I, I kept telling myself, I'm not even the best singer. But he made me know my part. I didn't just jump up and start singing. And I'm still not the best singer. But I bet if I learn that part, I can hold it until to eternity. You know why? Because 
He wanted to make sure we had it. He would stand us up one by one. If it was 30 tenors, he was going to go down the road until he found the one that didn't know what they were singing about. And when he found them, he didn't tell them, keep singing till you find. He said, sit down and shut up. <laughs> and he was so bold, some people he said, just, just rock when the choir rock. Y'all don't understand me. I'm talking about people that if you were late for lying up to march into church. In them days we marched into church. How many remember marching into church? The choir, march. We marched into church. And he was so crazy. If he saw you getting that line late, you, you thought he missed you. He would just catch you and march with you. And there was a door like here in our church. And he would just march you right out that door. And he down the back steps. See, when you don't know deportment and order, see, order brings you into a place of perfection. Practice doesn't make perfect, it makes permanent. Everybody say preparation. You must be prepped. Because if you aren't prepped, you're doomed to repeat the lesson again. And some people say, if I go through it again, I'm going to fly through because I know the stuff. No, you're going to rest in what you don't know. How many know I'm right about that? Two, perspective. Everybody say perspective. You need to have clarity about the situation you find yourself in. The other day it was foggy. You can't see anything until it clears up. You need perspective. You need perspective. Before you can deal with the situation of life, you have to have the right perspective. Not a fantasy, but the truth. Come off Fantasy Island. Sometimes we can want something to be that way so, so hard till we start living in that reality. A perpetual liar lives in the lie. And to him it's real. Wow. Three, pursuit. This is where it's lost many times. When we have purpose and we have destiny, we drop the ball at pursuit. What is pursuit? How to apply preparation. Preparedness promotes efficiency. The lesson must be applied. And you must be able to apply it. Or you missed it. So once you prepare, when the situation comes, and even if it's not exactly, you say, I can retrofit this. I know how to do that. We'll, we'll get it done. Whew. The fourth one is perseverance. Some of you fainting in the process. Get up. Stop falling out. You're too young. Well, I'm sick. Be healed in Jesus' name. Now get up. You don't have an excuse. Keep moving. Move hurting. You go to work coughing. <laughs> Woo! Keep moving. Perseverance. This is consistently doing the right thing without quitting. This is the difference between winning and losing. Keep on keeping on. Keep doing it. 
No, it's not easy, but keep doing it. You will pay the price for it not being easy. And that means it'll be something that's useful to you. When you go through hard places, you can handle hard situations. And some of you have been through hell, it looks like, on a rafter. But you made it. And God kept you. Don't resort to slickness because that won't last. Woo. So when I ended this message, I thought about the song we sing moving forward. What a moment you have brought me to. Such a freedom. I have found in you. You're the healer who makes all things new. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then the, the refrain comes back. I'm not going back. I'm moving ahead. Here to declare to you my past is over. All things are made new, surrendered my life in Christ. I'm moving I'm moving forward. Then it goes on to say, this is how it was done. You have risen with all power in your hands. You've given me a second chance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm not going back. I'm moving ahead. I'm not going back. I'm going ahead. Which way are you going today? Show me. Which way are you going? Show me. Which way are you going? Look behind you and say, I'm not going back. Get them gifts up out of you. Looking up here, please. Where? Yes, you. Forward. Blessings to you today. Blessings to you today. Just keep. We pray for you that if you heard this message today and it's a blessing to you that you surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Give him your heart. Give him your life. Find a good church to be in. Trust him. Let him develop out of you as you determine to live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Till we come together again. Happy New Year and bless you. Keep moving forward. You How many of you glad that he made all things new? I will forward. You make Hallelujah. 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 
Everybody standing, everybody standing. What I'm going to do is Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We don't want to close this time out without praying and then I'll take up offering at the end. And what I want to do is have Pastor Marcy start us off in prayer, and then I'll end up. But we just want to cover you as, as leaders of the house, pastors of the house. Bless you in this incoming year. Now, tomorrow is, is a rest day for us, but then starting Sunday, we will start our seven days of prayer. It'll be connected to morning service, and we'll try to abbreviate and then move on into our prayer time and then for the next six days afterward, here at the church, from, I'll say, 6.30 to 7.30. Give us time to get here. And we're encouraging you to come and just believe God. There'll be a prayer agenda each time. Pastor. Praise the Lord. To all of our viewers, we thank God for you, and we encourage your financial support of this ministry. We are here to bless you and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website, dovechurch.org forward slash giving, which will take you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.